Okay, so we can do some simple conditionals. So we can say when something is true or when something is false or when something is not something. So run task not equals true. But what happens if you want two things to be true? So you want to say run task equals equals true, but you also want a to equal one. Well, that's it. That's literally it. Run task equals equals true and a equals equals one. So this is basically, this has to be true and that has to be true. Okay, so in a logical and, both sides of the equation have to be true. Okay, if one of them is false, the whole statement evaluates to false. So run task is currently true and a is currently equal to one. Okay, so if I now say, set this to false, our output will look, it'll just say hello, so we'll just get hello friend. Now let's fail one of the conditions. So both sides of the and statement have to be true. So now we actually skipped both tasks because one of the conditionals was false. So if I change, so if I do that, we go back. Both conditions are now true. So we get our message again, false. Now one of the conditions is false. And so it skips it. Okay. So that is how we essentially use the and statement in order to say, how do I check that both the values are true and therefore that I want this task to run? Now there is a second way in which you can list these statements and it only supports the and keyword, okay? We'll come to the or keyword next, but if you actually provide a list of conditions here, no, nope. okay, a equals equals one, that's the same as using the and keyword. I like this better. I think that this is less cognitive overload, especially when the statements are very, very long. Like you're saying A equals one, B equals two, C equals three, goodbye equals false, run task equals true, and it's just and, 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 you have all this keyword, it produces a very large string. But when you use this when statement and you give it a list of the conditions that you wish to check, I personally find it much more readable, but you can use whichever method you like. But that essentially yields the exact same results because it's doing the exact same thing, okay? Now, what happens if you want three things to be true? So we've just done a list of two and we've done our string of two, okay? Then all you simply do is just do an additional and, a equals equals one and b, and then if we get the first element out of b, because it's a string, it's a list, it's a list of numbers, sorry, the first element is two, all three of those cases now need to be true in order for that task to actually execute. Okay, and we can prove that by simply changing one of them to be false and the task no longer executes.